the boat swayed like a cradle in the mid-ocean. It's hard to imagine that two days ago there were tall waves of palm trees. In the boat were Prince Pawnee's servants, Van Diathavan and Pungazali. Punghuali had a paddle in his hand. But she didn't force it. She was listening attentively to the conversation between Van Diathavan and Prince. They were also careful in their speech. They didn't seem eager for the boat to go faster. They were talking about what to do after the boat reached Kadakar. Van Diadevan was arguing that the prince should not go to Tanjavur and should come to Palayare. He gave many reasons for it. Your sister wants to see them as a matter of urgency. I have promised to bring them hand in hand. Let it be fulfilled, he pleaded. Are you asking me to disobey my father's orders to fulfill your promise? Asked the prince angrily. It is not their father's command, is it not the order of the reaper? Van Diathavan said. He also said one more thing. Would it be better to see the emperor free, or to see him as a prisoner of the Palyavatarayas? I say, listen. The news must spread that they have been imprisoned by the Palyavatarayas. The Cholas will all rise up and rise up. Their beautiful motherland will become a terrible battleground. Consider whether that is good. God must have sent that whirlwind so that such harm should not befall the Chola country. Do you want to create riots in the Chola country against God's will? Van Diathavan asked. This somewhat changed the prince's mind in the arguments he had been making all this time. If he came to know that he had been imprisoned by his enemies, there was a possibility of riots in Chola Nadu. He somehow knew how great was the admiration of the people for him. So the prince became deep in thought. After a while, he said, even if I decide to fulfill your wish, how is that possible? Will not the men of the Pulavetare be waiting for me at Kadakare? He asked. There is this running girl to help with that. No matter how many people are waiting on the bank, she will take us into the jungle without being seen by them. Punghuali. Did you hear what I said? Can you do that? Van Diathavan asked. Punguzali was then in the seventh heaven. Saving the prince from the sea and bringing him in the boat gave her boundless joy. When he joined Kadakar, the thought of breaking up with him kept coming and tormenting him. And what could she gain more than if she could help him in any way? If you take the boat a little west of Kadakare, there is a channel with thick forest on both sides. You can leave the boat through it. There are mangroves on both sides. No one can come easily. Punguzali said. Can't you leave us there and go to Kadakar to find out? I can, there's plenty of room to park the boat without anyone seeing it. Prince. Did you hear me? Van Diathavan said. I heard, father. You tell me to enter my motherland like a thief. You tell me to hide like a thief. Said. There was silence on the boat for a while. Then the prince said, Samadra Kumari. Why did you stop the boat? He asked. Punguzali looked at Van Diathavan and started to hurt her paddle. Pity. How long will this girl paddle alone? I'll put off a little. Give me here, mother, the paddle. Van Diathavan said. Knowing his intention, the prince smiled. My friend. All your schemes are in vain. I am not going to go to Padayare. I am not going to see Tanjavur. It seems that God will take me to Kailashat and take me away. Said. Van Diathava and Pungazali were panicked and stared at the prince. They saw that he had started shaking. Van Diathavan approached him and asked, Sir. What is this? Why is their body trembling? He asked. This is cold fever, father. I told you that this fever is very common in Sri Lanka, don't you remember? People who come from this Suram hardly survive. Said the prince. Even when the ship's sails collapsed in the middle of the sea, Van Diathavan was not so disturbed. The prince's words were so disturbing to him now. The oar slipped from the hand of Pungakwali by itself. Vitality in the body has completely faded. The light of life appeared only in the eyes. 
she stood staring at the prince with those eyes. The prince's body was shaking more and more. After a while it started to toss and toss. Sir! What shall I do? Tell me! I don't understand anything. Where should I take the boat? Pungazali. There is a doctor at Kadakare, isn't there? Vandiyathevan panicked. Pungazali was widowed without speaking. The prince suddenly jumped up. His trembling body was now unable to stand. Take me to my brother. Take me to the youngest brat at once. The words tumbled out of his mouth. Vandiyadeva was overjoyed to hear this. He was stunned and did not know what to do in the excitement. The prince, who stood shaking with trembling, said, Sister! Here I come! Here I come to see you! I will not listen to anyone who stops me and floated out of the boat into the sea. Fortunately Vandiyathevan then realized the situation. The prince realized that he had lost his sense of self due to the speed of Surat. He immediately caught the one who was floating in the sea and stopped him. The prince, who was already very strong, was now multiplied by Surat's speed. He tried to wriggle out of Vandiyadeva's grip. Seeing that he alone could not stop him, Vandiyadeva shouted, Punghuali! Punghuali! Run quickly! He screamed. The dormant flower rose to life. A leap came to the prince and she caught an arm to keep him from falling into the sea. The strength of Madhyana, which the prince had gained due to the speed of Sura, immediately disappeared. He became like a little child. Sister! I lie without speaking as you say. Don't be sorry for me, sister. What is my fate if you are not one? Said the prince and was amazed. Vandiyathevan and Pungazali gently put the prince on the boat. After that Pani's selver lay idle. His eyes were staring somewhere. Words were coming out of his mouth. Some made sense. Often appeared as unrelated words. Vandiyathevan realized that there was no point in asking the prince for advice. He also knew that he had the responsibility of saving Pani's lover from this most terrible danger. But there is this clever woman. She is just as concerned about protecting the prince as he is. Then there is the mercy of God who saved him from so many dangers. Punguzali. Do we need to speed the boat from now on? Vandiyathevan said. Punghwali's arms regained their lost strength. The boat went fast. Vandiyathevan was sitting next to the prince. When he thought of what he would do if he jumped into the sea at high speed again, his fate was disturbed. So he was watching him carefully. At the same time, his mind was seriously thinking about what to do above. Woman! What do you think? Shall we dare and go to the millions? Your family will help protect the prince, won't they? He asked. Sir! How can you tell who you can trust and who you can't trust in this day and age? I have a Tamayan wife. She is greedy for money. Those who measure up to my father are greedy. Said Punghuali. Also, the men of Palyavar who came to capture them may still be staying at Kodakare. More new men may have arrived in anticipation of the prince's arrival. She continued to say. Vandiyathevan was amazed at her idea. He was glad to have her help in this difficult time. So you also think it's risky to go directly to Kadakare? He said. Look at that. Punghuali pointed out. A ship was standing in the direction she pointed, and beyond that was the top of a Kodi Kara lighthouse. Aha! Uh -huh. There's a big log standing. Whose ship is that? Perhaps it's Parthibendra's ship. In that case, wouldn't it be better to take the prince to Kanchi? Might as well be the ship of the Paviatarir, sir. Do you see anything behind the ship? The top of the millionaire lighthouse is visible. Does it look different? I don't see anything different. It seems to me, on its top there seems to be a crowd of men gazing out at the sea. Do the people watching over there know this boat? I don't know. I'll know if I get a little closer to shore. We'd better be careful before anything else. You said earlier that there's a channel west of Kadakare? 
Can we leave the boat there? That must be done. We can get there when it's dark. Sir. Did you hide in the dark hall one day? The canal comes up very near that. If you and the prince tarry there a little while, I'll go and inquire about everything and arrive soon. Does the canal stop there, Flowerpot? Does it go anywhere else? The canal goes from Kadakare to Nagaipatanam, said Punguzali. At this moment Pani's Selvar was heard talking to himself in a loud voice. Yes, sister, yes. Did you say that the Buddhist Pikhas of Nagaipadinat said? And so it happened. At Anuradhapura, the great congregation of Buddhist Pikhas came to offer me the crown of Sri Lanka and the crown. I refused, sister. I refused because I had no desire for the kingdom. Whatever else you say, I will listen. The trouble of ruling the kingdom. But I don't want it. How much more blissful would it be to leave a boat in the sea? Listen, sister. There's a running girl on the shore. Hearing this, the whole body of Fungajalai became numb. Vandiyadeva also got angry. Both of them were curious to hear what the above was going to say. But suddenly at this point the prince seemed to gain some sense of self. He looked around and asked, Hasn't the crores arrived yet? Asked the prince in a low voice. Vandiyathevan said, There you can see the shore. He said. Before he could think whether to ask the prince for advice or not, the prince again lost consciousness and went to the world of Glandaranti. The prince's last words about the Odakarapan had raised waves of thought in Pung Jalai's mind. She felt shy to see Vandiyadeva and Prince. So she was rowing while looking at the direction the boat was going. The boat, which had been heading towards the place where the ship had stopped, was now turning and heading southwest. At dark it entered the canal which had sunk into the earth from the sea. As Punguzali said, there were high ridges on either side of the banks. Trees grew thick and tall on those hilly banks. Punguzali stopped the boat on the shore and said in a soft voice, Sir, take care of the boat and went down to the shore. She climbed a tall tree on the bank and looked around. Then she hurriedly came down. Good luck. Here we come. About an ear's length along the beach, men stand guard. Near the lighthouse is a crowd and chanting. She said. Any idea who it might be? Vandiyathevan asked eagerly. I don't know, she said, but it must be Palyavatarayar's men. Who else could it be? Anyway, let's go to the place I told you first. I'll go to my house by the second night and find out everything for sure. Woman! What happens if someone sees you? If anything happens to you, it's our fate. Vandiyathevan said. Sir! I have never dreamed of my life for so long. It is only today that anxiety has arisen. Nothing will come of my life until the danger to the prince is over. Said Punghuali. The boat slowly moved into the canal. Punghuali paddled very slowly so that no sound could be heard outside. Darkness surrounded the canal on both sides and the dark shadows of the tall trees on the banks cast into the canal and darkened its black water. The stars peeked out from the sky. Like Vandiyadeva. The nakshatras seemed to observe Apodak's course with great concern. The stars reflected in the water were often swaying as the trees along the shore swayed in the wind and their shadows swayed. They perfectly reflected the agitation of Vandiyadeva's soul. After the boat had been in the canal for what seemed like an age, Pungazalai stopped the boat on the shore. Pungazalai climbed the bank of the canal and entered the jungle. I mean her body was going her life was hovering in the boat left in the canal. At that pre-dark time, she walked very quickly, without looking at any thorn bushes, hillocks, or wild animals. She also ran where there were no obstacles. Near Kadakare Kulakar temple was marked. She was just about to reach the temple gate and the gurus locked the door to the Swami Sunadi. She looked around and realized that there was no one else. She locked the door and stood in front of the gurus who returned. The gurus were a little surprised to see her at that moment. Even though he knew her nature well, he was a little startled and stunned. He said, You, Pungazalai. 
I saw that it was someone else. The whole crores of people are in the same place, where will we see you mother for a while? I thought even this evening that there is no information about you even in such a long time. I had gone to a foreign place. Swami. I came to inquire if something was wrong. Who are those people standing on the beach? Pungazali asked. Don't you know anything? Aren't you going home? I went to the house. I came back to find a crowd there. You know I don't like seeing new people? Who's there? The great prince has come. His young queen has come. Their retinues have come. And yet Parthipendra Pallava of Kanchapuram. He has come too. He has not just come, he has come with terrible news. Don't you even know that, Pungujali? What terrible news is that? I don't know anything. Prince Pawnee's wealth also arrived in that sinner's ship. On the way, a whirlwind struck. The prince jumped into the sea to save someone. Then he was not caught. Millions of people are wandering around to see if maybe he will come to this beach and escape. Why is his young queen also wandering? Even a little earlier, that mother had come here. Pungujali. People are talking about the Isla Irani of Palvur. It's all wrong. Do you know how that mother is fretting about the fate of our prince? Is that so Kurakala? I am glad you speak of the good character of the Queen of Palvur. But why is that queen here? She has come to pray for the prince that somehow the prince will be caught alive. Are all of them stone-chested like you? You are not the least bit disturbed by the terrible news about the prince. What's the use of worrying, Swami? You have said so many times that everything will happen according to fate. Let it go. I don't want to go to my house when so many great people have come. Give me the prasadam in my hand and leave. I will eat here and stay in the temple. You're a freak. If big people come, everyone wants to go and see them and get used to them. You don't like strangers. Especially big people are the only thing you fear. Big people will bite you and swallow you? Why should you be alone in this forest? Gurakalya. If you do not wish to give prasadam, do not scold me in vain. Shiva Shiva. Why am I scolding you? I saw that this prasad is not enough for your hunger. Take it generously. The priest gave the Swami prasadam tied in a cloth. After buying the bundle and opening the bottle, he said, This is not enough for my hunger. You give so little to such a great Swami. Is this fair, Swami? Let it go, what is in that kettle? Drinking water. No, the milk anointed by Swami. I am going to take it for the baby. I am your child for today. Give that to and go away. You have merit. Good girl mother, you. Let her go, at least keep Kendi safe. Saying this, the gurus also gave Kendi to Pungazali. At that time, the voice of an owl was heard from somewhere in the distance. Pungujali was a little taken aback and asked, Sir, what was that sound? She asked. Don't you know, mother? The Koden is crying. The Kodanuka is starving in this million-acre forest. Said the gurus. Heard that voice again. Yes, it sounds like a Gotan's voice. Said Punghuali. Not a single bit will do you any harm. Lie down with the temple door closed, mother. After saying that, he built the path of the gurus. When the gurus disappeared, Pungujali also left. With the prasadam in her lap, she left with the kendi in her hand. She headed towards the direction where she heard Gotan's voice. After a short distance, a narrow channel intersected. On both sides of it, there was a thicket of thalambia bushes. Pungazali walked holding the bank of the canal. The thorns of the dalamha plants are sometimes prickly. She didn't care. The lotus blossoms burst into bloom and spread their fragrance. The smell would have intoxicated others. But Pungazali didn't even remember that. She walked slowly along the shore so as not to hear the footsteps. Her ears were listening intently. Don't you hear many different sounds in the forest at night? 
none of that caught her attention. Then, she looked forward to what the sound was. Here it is. I heard the sound of two people talking in soft voices. One is a male voice and the other is a female voice. Pungaze Lai stood well hidden. She listened carefully to what they were talking about. Sorcerer. Everyone believes, like you, that the prince fell into the sea and died. Even the hunter melts away. But I don't. Said the female voice.